Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Brother Dred. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, he is everything we need. Amen. We've been going through the Bible the past weeks. And let me tell you what a blessing it was even for me. Amen. Read it from uh, Genesis 1. And we write uh, up to the end of Leviticus, I believe. This is where it is. Uh, sometimes I'm a little bit ahead. So, uh, but I enjoy it so much. You know, refreshing. We hear everything. We hear some good new things that we read before. But this is the living word of God. It's always exciting. And uh, thank you, Pastor, for, for sharing the pulpit with me. Amen. God bless you. And damn good to see you, man. And, and God bless you, Miss um, Queen Esther. Good to see you. You are a really a strong lady. Good to see you, Miss Karen. God bless you. And my friend there, Andy. Oh, if I have to mention all the names here. And Johnny is in the house as well. Amen. Listen, Johnny, just stand up for a second. There is a miracle. There is a miracle. If you want to see a miracle, if you ever question, does God still perform the miraculous? Look at him. There he is. He will tell you. God is a miracle worker. God doesn't do tricks. He does miracles. Amen. One of the amazing stories of deliverance is of God's people in the Old Testament. I've been studying and I've read about the Seder, the Passover, the Last Supper, and I could see the parallel in our deliverance in today's uh, age in the New Testament. From our bondage of sin, God delivered us as He delivered the people of Israel from slavery. You may say, well, Pastor Roy, I've never been a slave. Yes, the Bible says if you are living in sin, you are a slave to sin. Whether you realize it or not, people are living under the bondage of sin today without them even realizing it. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. As we read through the Bible, we see Christ in every book of the Bible. Oh, I'm excited just to go through and by the end of the year, before, before we know it will be Christmas time again, amen? It's already February. We see Christ. In every book of the Bible, in Genesis, he's the seed of the women. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he is the high priest. In Numbers, he is the cloud by day and the fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he is the prophet like Moses. In Joshua, he is the captain of our salvation. Yes, my friend, in the New Testament, it is concealed in the Old Testament. And then we look at, at the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. The infallible, the perfect, the pure Word of God. Unchanged through the generations. Exodus 12, 14 says, So this day, talking about the Passover, it shall be a memorial unto you. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Jesus commanded his disciples to go and prepare the Passover. Jesus speaks about this event at the Last Supper and explaining how his death would change the world. He picked up the bread and we broke it just like we do every first Sunday in this church. We honor the sacrament, the holy sacrament of, of communion. And Jesus took it and he broke the bread and he said, this is my body that is broken for you. He took the wine and said, drink of this. This is my blood of a new covenant for you. We think of the lamb that was killed and, and, and in the Old Testament and they took the blood and put it on the post of the doors of the houses as God has commanded them uh, to deliver them from the bondage of sin. Yes, my friend, it doesn't matter who was in that house. If the, if the Lord saw the blood, he passed over. Amen. I tell you, thank God. Thank God. The Bible says in John 3, 16, that whosoever believe shall not perish but have everlasting life. I'm just breaking ground for my message. 
Just an introduction for my message this morning. And I want to read um, Exodus chapter 8. And I'm going to read from verse 8. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me. And from my people, and I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. I asked Miss uh, Stacy to put a little, uh, what, what do they call it, a logo or just a preview of the sermon. And I said, frogs, forever uh, fully relying on God. And she put a slimy picture of frogs on there. And I, that frogs were so ugly. And I wanted to say, change the picture to something beautiful. And I thought, no, this is what it was. Frogs are slimy. It's ugly. It's a pest. It's not a delicacy. I know some people in the South eat them. They say it tastes like chicken. I stay with chicken. And can I say... For you that is worried, there's no frogs on the menu after this service. Amen. It's all good uh, Tyson uh, or Purdue chicken that we've got for you. Amen. <laughs> 400 years, God's people in bondage. Israel followed Joseph into Egypt. When Joseph was sold into slavery, let me tell you, I must have read this a hundred times, but every time I read this, it's just mesmerizing the Word of God. And the beautiful thing of the Word of God, I've just been there in the Holy Land. I can trace it back to a specific place. This is how accurate the Word of God is. Some want to say, well, it's all made of things. No, I will take you with to the Holy Land. Some of you, you have been there. What the Bible speaks about, it can be identified and it will bring just so much truth to God's Word that is unchangeable and infallible. Mm. This is what I love about the Word of God. 400 years, 430 years, God's people in bondage. Um, Israel followed Joseph. You remember how he was slay, sold into slavery. But God's plan was in full motion. People didn't understand it. God looks at us today. He has eternal value for you and me. We might not understand Him, but I want to encourage you this morning. Trust God fully. Fully rely on God. Just like the acronym frog says. <laughs> I'm going to break it down in a minute. Just hold on. Trust Him that He has a plan for you to f fulfill His promise in His unsurpassing wisdom. He has the blueprint for your life and my life. I don't know what it is. I can imagine our poor little Joseph, just a young man, wanted to do good, wanted to be encouraged to his brothers, went there and, and, and encouraged them, but, but they had something else in mind and they despised him and they, they got him and they said, this is the one that my dad favors and they put him in the pit, sold him. Little did they know, God had his hand on Joseph throughout everything. Amen. And they followed him into Egypt when that famine broke out. But here after the death of Joseph, the population of Israel exploded to a point that the Egyptians were frightened. They said, they're overtaking us in number. God bless them. Amen. They are like, uh, uh, I think it's in, in, uh, in, uh, In China, where, where there's almost 2 billion people, they multiply quick. Amen. And to a point that the Egyptians, they were so frightened and they forced the Israelites into slavery. But when Joseph died, the new Pharaoh did not know about Joseph. He didn't know Joseph. 
And he got worried and for 400 years God's people in bondage. I believe the hard times in Egypt was the birthing pains for the nation of Israel to be born. Pharaoh put taskmasters over them. They had to make brick day and night. 400 years in slavery. You know 400 means 30 means completeness, maturity. 430 years. God's planning is always perfect. Never doubt it. What he has for you, trust him. Fully rely on God. Whatever you do, whatever you're going through. 400 weakness. 30 fulfill completeness, maturity. Do you know the priest officially entered into service at the age of 30? Numbers 4 verse 3 if you write it down. Saul became king over Israel when he was, guess what, 30 years old. The number for maturity, 30. David became king when he was 30 years old. 2 Samuel 5 verse 4, if you write it down. Ezekiel was called as a prophet when he was 30 years old. Jesus, here it is again, officially started his ministry when he was 30 years old, recorded in the book of Luke 3.23. And Pharaoh, when it got into a panic, when God blessed the nation of Israel, Pharaoh decreed that all Hebrew male babies be killed. Same devil. Same devil today. Guess what? They're after our babies. Unborn. They killed them right at the point of birth. Even today, same old devil, same plan. But God raised up a man yeah. called Moses. His parents defied the decree of Pharaoh. And they hit Moses miraculously for three months. And when they couldn't keep him hidden anymore, they put him in a basket in the Nile River. The Nile is the longest river in the world. It is a river that the Egyptians worshipped. The Nile was one of the gods of the Egyptians. And here, when Moses' mom and dad, they couldn't keep him anymore. They
Who is this God that I should obey? Here we come. Oh, you said, there will be an earthquake. It will be frost. Moses said to Pharaoh, God said, let my people go. If you will not obey, God will smite the land with rock. Blind, confusion, death, they noisy, they ugly. They're not a test. I saw a sister raise her hand and said, Well, I'll leave your head. And I'm there. But somebody told me there was a restaurant. I don't know how many times that God was to the cross. No righteous, they are pets. Frogs everywhere. Frogs in the bedroom. Did you see that little picture face to face? It's a disturbing little picture. But this is what I want to let you know what it is. In the servant's chamber, in the kitchen, in the house, in the playground, in the clothing, in the pockets, the Bible says. Big frogs, boom frogs, small frogs, little frogs that someone knowing that one night uh, we had a swimming pool. And my wife sent me out 2 o'clock in the morning to find a little green little frog that had the biggest, loudest mouth. <laughs> I just went it out. And you know what? I just, I didn't feel it. I mean, uh, I took that shower and I threw it right into the woods, about 500 yards and threw it into the air. But it was gone from my house. He called the magician. When they charge me. And somehow the devil copied people out in that what God did. But you know what? The devil could not stop the word of God's right. Yes, the devil.
honored God but nowadays they are scheduling the best football games on a Sunday and they schedule it in a time slot to keep you away from God's house you see me first I will follow you Jesus but let me first go you know what the Bible says let the dead bury the dead so urgent is the call of God of salvation upon our lives. So urgent it is. I will come to church regularly, but I first got to do something. I will commit completely, but I will follow Jesus, but how foolish it is to call Jesus Lord of all. In one breath and the next we say, me first. Let me first do my thing. Jesus said, no man having put his hands to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. One more night in the beer halls, the dance taverns, and one more night with the frogs. The story of a young girl, and I'm going to close it. <laughs> upon her heart. She was a goodly girl. Came to revivals, came to church, but she never made a commitment fully. To follow Jesus. And her mom stood with her in the pew and said, I will walk with you. She said, Mom, you know, uh, uh, this weekend uh, is the year end party and, and they're going to have a big celebration. All the, uh, the businesses is coming together and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be dancing. There's going to be music. Nothing wrong with music. Good music. Amen. And, and uh, uh, there's going to be... Uh, a lot of young men that I maybe can get to know. She said, maybe another night. She said, I first want to go to that party. Well, she went. She met a nice young man, good-looking young man. But this young man had a little bit too much to drink that night. Not her fault. He drank too much. And she never made it to another day. You see, when the Holy Spirit is talking on your heart, He's ready to deliver you right now. Don't be like Pharaoh that says, Give me one more night with the pleasures of this world. Give me one more night with the plague. I can handle it. The Holy Spirit said today, Be like Rebecca. You read it. Rebecca, when she was faced with a decision, she had to make an immediate decision. And, and to become Isaac's bride, her mother and her brother Laban said, well, give the girl a chance to think about it. Rebecca said, I will go. I will go. They tried to discourage her. I want you to be like a Rebecca because the things of God is very urgent. This is why we are preaching like this. Say, Lord, I will go just like a Rebecca. We want to straighten up first. The Bible says, the judgment of God must fall, must fall upon sin. The wages of sin is death. Proverbs 27, 1 says, Boast not yourself upon the day of tomorrow. We do not know what it holds. Oh, we have all these plans, and we think we might get there. The Holy Spirit is saying, now is the time. Don't put it off. Will you stand with me tonight? Or this morning? And you will say, yes, Lord. 
if you haven't made that decision. Or maybe you haven't fully committed to God and His promises and His work. You know the time is here and you know you can see the signs of time. It is here. It is breaking. It's like prophecy is walking off the Bible pages. Every day we see these things and we say, is there any common sense in this world? It's sin that clouds their vision. It's sin that makes them think like that. Just like a pharaoh, you would think it's common sense and say, I don't want these frogs anymore. Pharaoh said, give me one more night. Moses said, God is here right now. You call the time, you call the day. God was ready, just like he is today, to set you free and bring deliverance to you. And to stop the plague, to stop the plague, whatever it is in your heart, in your life, God is here to bring that to an end. Just like Rebecca, say yes, Lord.